the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. William asked me to take communion with him. Communion is set up up here. It's the blood and the body of Christ. It's a metaphor that uh, we're taking the body of Christ into us. We're cleansing uh, his blood. It's cleansing us on a continual basis. So they did it on a regular basis after the resurrection of Christ. So I encourage you to take communion and encourage you to anoint yourself with oil. We provide that every service. And, uh, you know, it's here all the time. If you need to come anytime, it, you know, some, someone's here most of the time. So uh, we invite you to do that. And it's a simple process. Uh, we take, uh, take the body of Christ and we pray, Lord, forgive us, cleanse us of our sin, that we might be uh, pure before you as we take your body into our body, we pray that you would purge us into sons and daughters of the Most High. So as we take the bread, we remember his body that was broken for us. Okay? And then we, you know, we don't, sometimes we serve communion, but most of the time it's just available to you. And, uh, you know, Perry Stone teaches that this is the healing meal. You know, he has a whole teaching series. You want to take communion, brother? Come on up and get get you some bread there. We uh, 
uh, asked you to ask the Lord to forgive you and be prepare you that we not take it unawares of uh, consequences. So if you want to do that, it's uh, available right here, right now. Uh, you can uh, take the bread anytime you want to. We've already taken it, so you can do that at your leisure. I'll let everyone get their uh, juice and we'll pray over it. Uh, anyone else that wants to take communion? Also, uh, uh, Jean West, that's Glenn's uh, mother. Uh, Jean holds your hand up there where I see, see who you are. Jean is going to start having a Bible study at her home. Uh, this, a prayer meeting. A prayer meeting. Okay, not a Bible study. A prayer meeting at her house at 9 o'clock on Tuesday mornings. And everyone's invited. Okay, so if you... You know, you can't get too much of the knowledge of God, okay? Can't get too much of the knowledge of God. So, okay, I've got a couple more getting uh, bread. Okay. Okay. So Paul said, uh, one reason there's many weak and sick among you because of, uh, you failed to take communion. It's not a commandment, but in a way it ain't, in a way it is. It, it, it's good for you. It can't hurt you. It represents the blood of Jesus. And the yes, amen. Okay, maybe you've taken the bread, okay. We ask the Lord's blood to cleanse us from the inside out that we might be uh, acceptable on his side if you take the juice. Okay, praise the Lord. And the oil represents the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we anoint ourselves with oil if you want. You know, you're welcome to. Um, you know, this journey, the journey of eternal life starts spiritual. Did you get that? The journey of eternal life. You were born physically. Whatever your birth date is, you are born physically. But the journey of the spiritual birth begins spiritual. And if you leave off that, you know, you, you, you're not going to grow. You're not going to understand it. You know, God created time at the same time. God created all time at the same time. You understand what I'm telling you? God created all time at the same time. You know, three different places in Scripture it says that Jesus was, or the Lord was crucified before the foundation of the world. From, William, from the foundation of the world. So when he, began, when he created time, it was at the same time that he gave himself for the church. The body of Christ, the bride of Christ. Huh? I don't want to get deep. I just want, to, I just want you to understand it, that, uh, uh, that uh, the journey of eternity begins at the spiritual birth. If you don't understand what that, what's happened there, you know, if you don't understand what that means, you know, that's why the word, that's why we have the word of God. That's why he gives us an instruction book to understand these things. But if we're not students of the Bible, if we don't become students of the Bible, then, then we're not going to grasp the nature of God Almighty that, that created everything. Uh, Pat came to me and asked me to pray for Doris, uh, Robert's, uh, Robert Cooper's daughter. Uh, they had to do emergency heart surgery on her yesterday. And uh, so she needs intervention. Um, 
So we need to pray for angels to be charged. And see, that's spiritual terminology. See, you don't see angels unless they manifest themselves. So, so, uh, but they're here. Uh, you know, they're here now. You know, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit's here now. That's the magnificence of our God, Creator. He's omnipresent. He's all in all. And He's got all things. He's got everything prepared for every single one of us. You understand that? So He's ready for, I mean, the power of our words uh, is very important. And, you know, he created everything that was created in Genesis by the power of his word. Gwen's brother. Okay. Okay. We pray for his salvation. Okay. Is Doris saved? Dolores is saved. Okay. Okay. Uh, Megan's sick today. Okay. Uh, I called uh, and talked to David Gurley as I was getting here to church, and, and he's recovering. Uh, he had pneumonia in his both lungs, and they've been shooting intravenous antibiotics since he had the surgery on his heart, and he's feeling better. He may get to go home tomorrow or Tuesday, so but we want to still continue to pray for David Gurley. Uh, Pastor Friday, I talked to him. He's well again, out so winning last night. So I uh, want to keep them up in prayer also. Uh, you know, uh, in, in the book of Acts, there was a group of people that were following, following Jesus. They were following the new birth experience through the preaching of John the Baptist. And so the disciples that were filled with the Holy Ghost encountered these people, and they knew they were working the same on the same side. And they asked the, the disciples asked these disciples of John, "Have you have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit since you believed?" And they said, "We didn't even know there was such a thing." You know, that's a paraphrase, but that's what they said. They didn't know that there was a manifestation of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So it took the disciples laying hands on those to teach them and impart knowledge to them that they were filled, that they, that they were already filled, but they didn't know the manifestation of it. So that's why church is so important. That's why fellowship is so important. That's why ministry is so important. That's why your Bible is so important. Huh? I mean, it's so important, church. I mean, it's the path to victory. You want victory, don't you? Well, I'm telling you, the path to victory. It's the path to victory. It's the path to the to the answers to all your questions. You know, we might be scared of your questions, but he ain't afraid of nothing. Huh? And he'll answer you. He'll let you know. He won't leave you or forsake you. When, the, when, when it gets tough, he's going to show up and manifest. It, you, you see, it, it takes a breakdown for, for the manifestation to, to, to appear and fix the breakdown. That's the evidence of the, of the true believer. God's able to fix it. So we're going to pray right now that God fixes the healing uh, process of every person we mentioned here, and 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 I'm going to ask the Lord to 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 fix fix your hearing and your seeing right now. Huh? I'm going to ask God to fix your hearing and your seeing right now. Linda needs healing, ladies. Anoint Linda right there. Are you ready to have church? Yeah. This is church. 
This church, we're having church already. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, we just come to you right now. We ask you, dear Lord, to manifest these uh, these uh, healings and these areas that, that need attention, dear Lord. We speak uh, by the power of our voice over these individuals that 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 healing would manifest itself by the power of your word in us, dear Lord. We pray that you'd, that you'd open up our minds, our ears, our eyes to see the spiritual realm that's eternal. And Lord, we already see the physical realm, but Lord, the, the eternal realm supersedes the physical realm every time. Lord, we pray that the, the manifestation of victory would start overtaking those that have faith and believe in you, dear Lord. We claim souls for our labor today, Lord. We pray that you would send an anointing right now from your throne room to touch every heart right where we're at, right where the individual is. Lord, I know that we all come to the table from different perspectives and understandings of Scripture and relationship with you. Lord, we pray that you would help us right now to work out our salvation with fear and trembling knowing that you have the power to destroy the soul and the spirit and place it into eternity where you deem that our faith takes us to. Lord, we give you the glory for everything that's done because these things that we ask to be done are spiritual. Spiritual. Overlaying physical. And Lord, we give you the glory for it in Jesus Christ's holy name. Everyone said amen. amen. Praise the Lord. You know what amen means in translating in Hebrew? Amen means so be it. So be it. If, if you say an amen to something ain't, you don't want to so be it, you better not say amen maybe. <laughs> huh? <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. You love the Lord today? Amen. I want to shake up your understanding. Do you, do you love the... Do you love the church today? The church is the bride of Christ. Huh? The church is the bride of Christ. You remember I was telling you the temple is what houses the power, houses the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the temple. I thank God that I have an understanding that, that once I believe that he entered into my heart, my mind, my soul, my spirit, and, I, and my spirit man that fell in the fall, my spirit man switched places with my body. Amen. We're created a living soul, but we're a triune creation. Three parts, one person. Three parts, one person. Soul, body, and spirit. When the fall happened, our spirit and body switched places. When I became redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, my spirit took back its position where the body was, and, and that's where the battle goes on until it's finished and I go to my rewards. You understand what I'm saying? So my spirit is on this side of my soul. I mean, that's just kind of a picture I'm trying to paint for you that where you understand what's taking place in, 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 in the eternal, which is already fixed. Huh? Praise God. Uh, Stacia's going to get baptized today after service. So if there's anybody here who wants to get baptized, uh, Stacia's been baptized. She wants to get rebaptized. It don't hurt to do your first works over again. It don't hurt to do your first works over again. You know, my sister, Rick mentioned it during Sunday school, my, my next to the youngest sister, Diane, she made the statement at one time. She said, if I have to ride the altar, I'm going to heaven. I mean, if it takes me coming to the altar every service and every opportunity, that's what I'm going to do because I don't want to miss heaven. I don't want to go to hell. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go to hell. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, my Lord.
Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each had six wings. With twain he covered his face, with twain or two he covered his feet, and with two he covered, he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken for tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Amen. I see the Lord. I see the Lord and His train fills the temple. I see the Lord. He is high lifted up. I see the Lord. Holy, holy is the 
the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I told y'all last week that I was going to try a little bit of a different approach today. I don't know how it's going to go over, uh, but uh, you know, people in today's time don't know really what it means to be saved and born again. I mean, they don't. They're not familiar with the Bible. I mean, uh, you can have church without preaching, but you can't have church without praise. And I'm not talking about listening to the band and getting emotionally stirred. I'm talking about you can't have church without coming to church to praise God. That's why we come is to praise Him. I'm getting a ring and do this thing. Uh, but, uh, I mean, we come to church. With praise. I mean, we prepare ourselves to praise. All right, I'll try to be quiet. Okay, is that better? Thank you, Jesus. That Check that, that headset, Carl. See what you got back there. The uh, services since November, they missed a few in November, but uh, Carl started putting the services on YouTube on the... The Lord's Disciples, TN. We've had over 600 and something views over all the services we've had. Uh, we've got, I think, 19 subscribers on the, on the YouTube channel. And that subscribing just gives you an alert, gives you an alert when Carl gets the service uh, on. Uh, Kim uh, Sanders came and and preached one service, call recorded, and me and her mother and Carl was her only congregation, but she preached like they was a whole congregation sitting here. She's got over 50-something views on the service she preached and Carl put on the, on the YouTube channel. I mean, it's powerful, powerful. I mean, you... When we come in here and we sit and we 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 lose our lose our uh, um, ability to to I mean concentrate we, we I mean you, you when you leave here your memory is just patchy that's how it is it's patchy the best you can do it's patchy so it's good to have uh, it's good to have it that you if something moved you in the service I'm telling you there's more in it there. I mean, we could just, uh, 
you know, with the praise and worship in the opening there, we could say, well, thank you for coming to church. Because a lot of people just get a little bite. But I want you to know that there's an eternal spiritual realm that is more powerful, that is more, uh, more rewarding, more fulfilling. There's a spiritual, eternal presence that supersedes anything you can touch, feel, taste, or smell. I'm telling you, sir, there's an angelic host right here, right now. There is a, a courtroom setting in the heavens, and God's sitting on the throne. Many Elohims are in the council of God. You know, we, we understand that, that Elohim is a term for God. Yahweh is, is a term for God. There's uh, lots of Elohims, but there's only one Yahweh, Elohim. Yahweh, Elohim. The kids can be dismissed for children's church. Sorry about that. I get carried away. I get carried away. I've been praying all morning, so I forget to pray because I've done been praying, but I need you to pray for me too. So, hallelujah. He's okay. Don't get, it, don't get all tore up. He's okay. We're used to kids. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I used to carry my grandkids around and preach when they were little. Huh? Praise God. That, you know, kids are like sponges. They, they get more than the adults do. You see them playing, but then you ask them something. They say, I know that. I know that answer. They getting it. They getting it. You know, the scripture says that they see in the face of God when they're born. Huh? They're more spiritual than we are. The spirituality wears off of them as they grow a little bit, just like it wore off of Moses after he'd been in the presence of God. Because they were in God before he sent them to the earth. That's another message, Joe. But, you know, on the YouTube channel, I, you know, I'm waiting on somebody. Jackie, one time when I first announced it, start. You know, she viewed and then she responded. She uh, commented. There's a comment section down there. C comment. You hated it, or you thought it stunk, or you thought it was good, or whatever. You know, we, we can glean from the, your response, but I want you to respond today. I mean, I, I, that's the approach I'm going to try to take today is to get you to respond. I mean, this, is, this may be alien to you. I don't know. But it's in your Bible. It's in the Bible. Father, we just thank you for an opportunity to come before your congregation, before your bride, and share your word that we might all grow in your grace, that we might not be ignorant of eternal life, eternal spiritual birth that we can walk in now. As Paul said, walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. So Lord, help us to learn how to do that. Lord, we need a teacher. We need you to teach us. The Holy Spirit will just uh, release you right now, and we give you the glory for everything you do. Because we ask these things in Jesus, our Lord's holy name. Amen. Amen. God created us with a free will. The angels have a free will also. Or they wouldn't have been able to fall. They have a free will. But there's a difference in having a free will and being, being, listen to this, there's a difference in having a free will and being a free moral agent. There's a difference. A free moral agent 
is a free person, freed from the bondage of sin. When we're coming to this world, we're born into slavery. We are. Every single one of us is born into slavery. That slavery is to sin and Satan. We're bound to it. But becoming a free moral agent is to be released by the, by the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. That's what it means to be born again. But to be born again is to recognize the eternal spiritual existence of eternity. Everything, when you become born again, everything becomes spiritual. Spiritual. Spiritual becomes the predominant force in your life. But if you, it's, it's like when, when in, the, in the book of Acts when, when Philip was taken out of Samaria after the great revival that he, he ignited in Samaria. Philip was taken out because God had a job for him to do on the road to Ethiopia. Uh, when the Ethiopian was being carried, he was the accountant for the king of Ethiopia, as uh, scripture implies. So he was being carried by servants that were carrying him down the road, but uh, he was sitting there reading the, the Torah where it was Isaiah uh, 53 about the, the lamb being led to slaughter, not saying a word. And so Philip walked around beside him as he heard him re reading the scripture. And he said, you understand what you're taught reading? You understand what the scripture is saying because it's a, it's a picture. I mean, it's, it's a picture language of, of Christ being the Lamb of God in Isaiah 53. And, and the Ethiopian told Philip, said, how can I accept someone show me? How can I? That's why we assemble ourselves. How can you know except someone shows you? You see... It's like I've said before, every person in this room comes today with a def different level of understanding. You bring to the table different knowledge than I've experienced, but I've been at this thing for 30 years plus. You may have just started. But God is, in the last days, is going to super bring you into a knowledge of a spiritual realm because the latter rain, the, the last anointing, latter rain, the last anointing before judgment, before the white throne, not before the white throne, before the battle of Armageddon, seven-year tribulation, the last outpouring of the Holy Spirit is going to be greater than any one before The statements that, that Daniel was writing, the statements that, that, that Paul was writing, the statements that Ezekiel wrote down, the statements that the Old Testament, New Testament uh, speaks about is being opened up to whosoever will. I mean, if you... If you understand what's going on you understand that this temporal realm's passing away but the eternal's never going to pass away the eternal i'm not talking about all only in heaven i'm talking about the eternal judgment and punishment for you not doing it for you not doing it not love you see it's all about god's love we're here because of God's love. Amen. We're here because God so loved the world, us. He gave. He gave. He, he, he gave. The only one that could give. The only one that could give. And it 
have any bearing on, on, on the destiny of humanity. We're not in this thing. We're not in this thing by chance. We have an appointment. I didn't make it. I didn't make the appointment. He made the appointment for me. He made your appointment for you. You can kick and scream about it all you want. You can say, I don't want to do it that way. I want to do it my way. That's what Nimrod was saying. Have you ever heard of, uh, of Michael Lake, Dr. Michael Lake? Dr. Michael Lake, last year or so, maybe two years ago, wrote a book called The Shinar Directive. That's the name of the book. The author, Dr. Michael Lake. Well, what is the Shinar Directive? The Shinar directing is, the, is where Nimrod chose to build a tower not to get to God, but to bring God down to man. Shinar was the valley that he began to build it in. It was a directive to exalt, God, exalt man, Satan, and the angels that left their former estate up to a place that they would bring God down and, and, uh, and it didn't work. It didn't work what, what God's saying whenever, when he came down. He said, they all talk one language. They're all on one level. They hadn't been far removed from the flood, the judgment of the flood. They hadn't been far removed from that. And so here, here they are trying to bring God down. He comes down with the council said uh, there won't be anything impossible to them because they all speak the same language and they're on the same level. So what did God do? He confused their language. So they didn't understand and they weren't on the same level no more because they were all scattered because the chaos that, that, that doing it your way will cause. You see, the first thing God done in Genesis 1 was give man dominion and then said, subdue the earth. You've heard me say that time and time again. Subdue the earth. You ain't going to subdue the earth unless you subdue this earth and vessel. You got to bring this vessel into control, into subjection to the to the counsel of God Almighty. Go with me to uh, First Kings twenty-two. First Kings chapter twenty-two. Now, in 1 Kings chapter 22, you have a setting. You have a, you have a, a history lesson. You have a history lesson. And you know, history, if you break history down, it, it actually means his story. We're all his story. He's not finished with his story yet. But here, uh, even in the Old Testament, it brings out the fact that, that, that there is a, a, a mightier presence than what we, they physically saw then and we physically see here. And I'm going to start reading at verse 19 of, of 1 Kings and it, it talks about this is a setting going on in heaven. Now there's a setting going on in heaven just like this. The subject matter is different though. What had happened, there, there was a king, Ahab, came on the scene in Samaria in the northern tribes, the ten tribes of Israel. The king came on the scene, came named Ahab. He married a woman named Jezebel. You see, I've taught it before, and, and I've used the terminology of the table that Jezebel set. 
But if you really understand the, the scenario, it was Ahab's table. Ahab was the king of the northern tribes, and it was Ahab's table. He just allowed his wife to take over and bring in 450 prophets of Baal. So here God sends uh, uh, Elijah to, to set things straight, to get uh, uh, Ahab's attention. So here, here, uh, here Elijah calls fire out of the sky, kills the 450 prophets of Baal, kills the 450 prophets of Baal. Then Jezebel threatens him and he runs off the cave. So here, the one that would be king of Samaria tramples Jezebel under a horse's feet, under a, a group of horse's feet in an in a alleyway, and all that was left of her was her skull, the palms of her hand, and the soles of her feet. That was all that's left of her because the dogs ate the rest of her. Huh? So here... Ahab repented. He understood he was fighting against God. He kind of repented, but he didn't learn his lesson. That's how we are. We, we repent, but we don't learn our lesson. We want to return to our vomit that we came out of. So here the setting goes from a, from a physical realm to a spiritual realm. And this was what was going on in the background as Jehoshaphat and Ahab teamed up to go to war. I ain't losing, Yara. Okay. So here's the scene. God got tired of Ahab's backsliding. I'm telling you, God got tired of it. He appointed a time. He appointed that time that I was talking about a minute ago. He appointed it for Ahab. And he said... Right here, verse 19, this is, the, the, this is the, the counsel, the divine counsel of God. It's in session. Never goes out of session. It's in session. It'll be in session for eternity. Okay? And he said, Hear thou, therefore, the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on a throne. Probably the same one that uh, Isaiah 6 talked about in that song that Bob wrote, huh? Huh? So it's a continual story, <laughs> huh? Right? Huh? Uh, well, so, sang. Okay. Throne. And all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand. And on his left. Now, it says the the host of heaven. You you remember we we founded uh, on our patches uh, 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 Hebrews twelve one two and three it starts out with the the host of heaven is witnesses there in Hebrews chapter twelve starts out that way. So here the same setting, but there's a spiritual realm that supersedes the physical realm. And if you don't understand those two concepts, I mean, here's where we're at. Where you have, you have literal and spiritual. There's two sides. Literal will take you to hell. Spiritual will take you to heaven. You must be born again. Logos, logos is the word. I mean, I'm talking words. You might go down the road to, to the BP or whatever over here, and you're still talking words. But I don't know what kind of words you're talking. So logos is words in general. Rhema is words from God. Rhema is words from God. That's what this is. You know, there's pages that separates the Old and New Testament. I tore them out because there ain't no separation. There is no separation. Bear Bryant, every year when football season started, no matter how many players he had, 
He started out his first meetings with this is a football. <laughs> huh? I mean, no matter what level the person playing is, he says, this is a football. This, this is rhema. This is the word of God. No matter what translation you have, it's the word of God. You might say, well, there's there a man had his hand on. Well, Paul said that, that all scripture, all scripture is given by God. My breath is given by God. Your breath is given by God. So there's no, I mean, there's, just like I've said before, in Hebrew, there's 70 translations for one letter, one word. <coughs> Coming from different perspectives. This is the King James. King James, Zonderman Bible. When America was settled by the pilgrims, they hated King James. They wouldn't even allow a, the Bible, the King James Bible, to be printed in America for the first hundred years. They had the Geneva Bibles, what the pilgrims found America on. So what are you going to split hairs on? This is not, I mean, this is all in the boundaries of the physical, not the spiritual. If you got a question, take it to the Lord. You'll get the right answer. If you if you got a question, you take it to man, you might get any kind of answer. You might get any kind of answer. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to This is a setting here, and God is saying, we put the end to Ahab. And he's sitting, he's sitting on the throne. All the host is there. He's saying, we're going to put an end to Ahab. How are we going to do it? How are we going to do it, heavenly host? It's, it's, it's a spiritual thing. It ain't a human thing. It's a spiritual thing. How are we going to do it? A spirit came up and said, I'll, I'll go and put a lying spirit in his prophets. And they'll tell him to go up to war, and, and he's going to be successful. So they did, and he got, he got killed up there. They're saying he's going to be successful in return. I want you to turn to 1 Samuel. Because I want you to see that you have, you have an opportunity to be involved. First Samuel chapter 23. Now, let me lay a foundation here. This is at the point when David was fleeing from Saul. Saul was out to kill him because David had been anointed as king in his place. Because Saul never got the spiritual, he never caught the, he never got the, the, the relationship with God. He had a relationship with the natural, not the spiritual. But David, a shepherd, set out shepherds and the, the sheep and had a relationship with God that he killed a bear and he killed a lion because he saw God protecting him. Then he killed Goliath. So David come up in the house of, of Jesse but was grafted into to Saul's house because he killed Goliath, he was promised a hand of Saul's daughter. So here, here Saul throws a, a spear at him to kill him, and God deflects it, and he misses. So here David goes on the run, and, and here we have a scene that, that Saul hears that David is in a certain town, and he knows that that town is a walled city. Okay. You understand where we're coming from? All right, let's look at uh, 1 Samuel. 
David gets a message that Saul's coming for him because Saul found out where he was. So here, David, knowing God, knowing the, the spiritual realm, the eternal realm, knowing the God. I mean, you got to know God. You got to know there is a God first. You got to know what the Bible says there were many gods, little G's. But there's only one big G God. Okay? So, verse 10 says, And David said, O Lord of Israel. See, David heard. He knew he was in a walled city. He knew that there were many people there. And so, here are the people of that city was, oh, there's on David's side. But here David goes to God. David didn't go to David nest. David went to God nest. Okay, this is David going to God, spiritual God, and asking. He said, uh, Then said David, O Lord, God of Israel, thy servant hath uh, uh, certainly heard that Saul seeketh to come to Kilia to destroy the city for, for my sake. Will the men of Kill ya, kill ya, deliver me up unto the hand, unto his hand. Do you get this? David is asking God, will these people of this city hand me over to Saul? Huh? Will Saul come down as thy servant hath heard? O Lord God of Israel, I beseech thee, tell thy servant. Tell thy servant. Now how, I mean, how simple does that get? How simple does that get? Are you tracking with me? If David done it, a man, then you can do it. Amen. Tell thy servant, and the Lord said. Say that with me. And the Lord said. You get it? And the Lord said. And the Lord said, he will come down. Huh? He will come down. Verse 12 says, Then said David, Will the men of Kilia deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, Say it with me. They will deliver thee up. You've got a help. David knew that he had a help. When he stood before Goliath, he said, The Lord will deliver you into my hand. Huh? I'm telling you. You've got a help that's waiting on your response to your circumstance. You know, it, you, my grandmother, Hutzel, my grandma Hutzel was a praying woman. She prayed for me every night, even though for 34 years it didn't look like I was going to make it. I'm telling you. It didn't look like I was going to make it. I went to school with the guy that was older than me. He graduated a year before I went to high school. And I saw him at the hospital when, when James, uh, uh, when, uh, when Charlotte's brother was in the hospital, Richard Gunner. 
and I went up and had prayer with him. I had went to Richard's house and, and led him to the Lord a year or two before this event when he was in the hospital before he died. And, and, and I, and I you know, witnessed to him, talked to him. He accepted Christ right there in his living room. He wasn't very good health. He could he'd get up and walk. He'd get dizzy. And, and so uh, here I talked to him. He accepted Christ. I baptized him in his sink, kitchen sink. So here, there, 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 a couple of guys from Wallen, older than I was. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm 65, so they had to be 68, 69, 70, something like that. And, and one of them was a preacher's son. And I was telling him, he said, they, they asked me. They're standing there in the lobby of the ground floor of Blutmore Hospital, and they, they asked me, said, you think he's saved? I said, I know he's saved because I led him to the Lord and baptized him in the sink. And the one looked at me and said, I never figured you'd be a preacher. <laughs> I never figured you'd be nothing. But I am walking, talking, preaching my grandma's prayers. What's going on? It's not, it's, 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 it's her prayers. It's why I'm here today, that God had mercy on me time and time again. Because of her righteousness, the prayer of a righteous person availeth much in the sight of God. It goes up as a sweet savor into the spiritual realm, into the counsel of God, into the, into the divine counsel of God that surrounds us right now. And you've got to understand that, that, that there is two realms. This is my Bible. There, there's a... a God communicates on more than more than more than just the Bible, though. I mean, God communicates on more on more ways than just the Bible. He communicates on the level of prayer. He communicates on the level of how much you believe that He is, how much you know about Him, how much you care about Him. You see, my my worry is. I don't see people loving God. Oh, they say I'm a Christian, but they're, they're falling into the same trap that, that Nimrod did, trying to bring God down to your circumstances instead of you coming up to his level of victory. We're in the same place. It's the deception that Jesus talked about in Matthew 24. The deception is that we can that we're gods and we'll be we can bring God down to us. Because every time we even hit our thumb with a hammer or something, oh God help me. And he is concerned about your thumb. He's more concerned. He's more concerned about the son or daughter that was in his heart that he manifest at this last day. He's more concerned about your understanding and believing that he is than your thumb, than your circumstance. Because he can turn your circumstance around on a dime. He can. He can turn it around on a dime. My grandma used to, you know, she was on SSI, made a little bit of money, and and, and so she she, you know, talked to her about, I wish you had, I wish you had a better income, and she said, I don't want no more than what I got, what God's give me. I don't want no more than what God's give me. Because she wasn't living on her, on her SSI. She was living on her relationship with the God that kept her, that, that brought peace into her heart when she lived years and years and years uh, uh, by herself and, and raised kids and they're off doing this and everything, but she never lost her faith and she never lost her commitment. 
commitment. You see, when, when, when you're born to the Spirit and you lose your commitment, then you don't understand the love of God that saved you to start with. I'm telling you, you don't understand the love of God that saved you to start with. This is what it's about. God answered David and said, yeah, they, they'll put you over. And so he, he was able to flee him and his men. So he, he, he asked God, he said, yeah, they're going to. So if he just stayed there, think, well, God's going to keep me. But he, had, he knew that he had to go to God, and God told him, said, yeah, they're going to turn you over. So he left. They didn't turn him over because God told him. God gave him advice. You interested in God's advice? Are you interested in love, the love of God that surpasses all understanding? The love of God is just as powerful at midnight tonight as it is right now. But if you quit desiring him the way he desires you, you know, the Bible, you know, if you, if you go, if I was going to go, but I ain't going to go there because I don't want to keep you too long. But if you go to, to Psalms 82, if you go to Psalms 82, it talks about the counsel of God. It tells you why there's a counsel, because God delivered them. God delivered Israel time and time and time again. And they walked away from his delivering hand. They walked away from his love, searching for something else. So God, God's not going to force you. That's what being a free that's what having free will means. He's not going to force you because you're, you're already enslaved. I mean, the devil ain't going to bother you because you're already enslaved to sin. He ain't going to bother you. But if you want to, if you turn around and God gets your attention, God gets your attention, and you turn around or start turning around, the devil says, wait a minute now. I got to do something. About to lose this one. Trouble will come. Hmm? God comes with instructions. <laughs> huh? God comes with instructions. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And we're going to close with this. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I got some new reading glasses, and uh, I keep wanting to put them on my nose upside down. <laughs> oh, there's so many places. It's, this is such a good, a good word. Yeah. I'm telling you. The Word of God is such a good word. Bob, would you get ready to sing that song that you wrote about uh, that Paul, I would do this? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Now, this is where we need to pay attention. Now, is anybody getting anything? Yeah. I was going to have Rick go around with the microphone and give the people that had questions. Anybody got questions? No, you're doing great. I'm trying to explain it the best I can. Anybody got questions though? I mean, I don't want to. I want I want you to get some help today. Okay. Now listen to this. Now the world would turn you up on your ear to make you think, well, this is speaking about talking in tongues, but there's more to it. This is talking about Dumas. Dumas, Dumas is the spirit. The Holy Spirit is Dumas. It's power like the dynamite. Okay? Okay, verse 10. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 10. 
And Paul's explaining to the Corinthians here, and he's explaining to us because we have a record of it right in our hand, okay? There are, it may be, there are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without significance. Okay? Verse 11. Therefore, if I know not the meaning, a better translation then the King James is, therefore, if I know not the force or power of the voice. Many voices coming at you from the TV, radio, neighbor, spouse, kids, whoever, out of the spiritual realm, out of the angelic realm that's fallen, out of Satan's realm that's, that wants to deceive you. There's a lot of voices out there. But there's a voice that, that supersedes all them, and it only you only hear it once you're born again. Once you believe, once you understand that Jesus Christ's blood saves you. Rick was talking about Jesus Christ died on the cross. The Roman soldier stuck a spear in his side and blood and water gushed out of his side. Blood and water gushed out of his side. If you understand the spirituality of what happened, the bride was born right there. The bride. When Adam was created, God put a deep sleep on him and took out of his rib, out of his side, Eve, the bride. It's all about the bride. The bride. So many... Okay. Therefore... If I know not the force or power of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian. Who has a different translation on barbarian? Huh? It says foreigner. Foreigner. Foreigner is a better translation. If you're not born of the Spirit of God, the new birth, then you're a foreigner. To the spiritual realm. Okay? So we're talking about voices. We're talking about understanding and whose voice you're going to hear. What did David go to? He went to God, the God of Israel. Ask God. He asked God a question and got an answer. Huh? You know, you might think this is a deep but this is foundational this is foundational church this is a starting point when jesus when jesus came into out of the out of the out of the grave and came into the presence of the disciples on the eighth day he told thomas said touch me feel me that I am flesh and bone. He didn't say nothing about blood because the blood is what life force is to the church. The blood was given totally. He gave it every bit. He gave him totally. He gave himself totally. He gave himself totally, not just on Sunday, not just on Saturday. He gave himself totally, continually. Continually, from then to now and on into eternity. And when did he do it? From 
the foundation of the world. It's not in a box. It's not hid in a corner. It's not put away in a closet somewhere. It's not, it's not put, put away in a closet. Gene's calling for a, a prayer service. Prayer service. You know what she's calling for? She's calling for people to come together and talk to God. Huh? It's calling for people to come together and talk to God. And it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart to know that we're so close. And there's so many people that don't get it. You know, it's, it's like the unemployment rate. You come out, I think it was 4%. Huh. That's what they said. It says unemployment rate in America is 4%. That's the same way it is with prayer in America. There's more people praying than you really realize. But the world would say, there's nobody praying for you. Nobody cares. You know, if I understand that God created all time at the same time, and I don't understand that there's people lost, then how could I have peace? How could I have peace? How could I think, is there not something I can do? I mean, this is, this is heavy. There's so much at stake. There's so much at stake and so many, so many lost and undone. So many. I don't know. Maybe you need a motivational speaker or something. I don't know what else to do to motivate you to be faithful to your church. To love what God loves. Love what God loves. Go ahead, Bob. i 
sun And he put my sin to death Oh, wretched man that I am Who will deliver me from my body of you may not under, You may not understand right there you may you, you you may not understand what's going on this is my baby sister she's the youngest of five and she's really been struggling for some time now said I don't know how to do it I don't know how to do it either that's why you need to understand this message today I don't know but he knows and he gives us instructions he gives us instructions and those instructions come in many forms comes in the form of his word, his letter, his book, him. He is the word made flesh. It comes in the spiritual realm of him answering your prayers. It comes in the spiritual realm at the midnight hour. And you're all troubled and you pray and peace comes. It's a spiritual thing. It all begins spiritual, but it don't end. It don't end when the spiritual begins. It never ends once you're born to the spirit. It never ends then. Never ends then. But it's the most important thing that you'll ever grasp. Terry, Terry, love you. I appreciate you coming. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, honey. Y'all get involved. Get involved. Amen. Get involved. Get involved. Somewhere, somewhere, get involved. God will show you one step at a time. God, if you just put your hand in his hand, he'll show you one step one step at a time jack sometimes sometimes you get knocked back because the devil ain't locking you sometimes you might get back four or five steps sometimes you might be like job you might be pressured by satan some way or another tried but once the trying's done and you've stayed faithful because you understand that it's a spiritual battle. But the Bible says no weapon, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. If God be for you, who can be against you? Who can be? Go ahead now. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live.
There's no better time than right now to come. The prayer you don't pray, you know, he don't answer. You know, people talk about struggling, don't know how to do it, don't know how to make, don't know how to put one foot in front of another because there's too much pulling back on them, too much of the past pulling back on them. But let me tell you something, being born again is being a new creation in Christ. All things are passed away. All things are new going forward. So don't let the past pull you back. Run. You see, you see, it it, it was it started out walking, but the Bible ends running. Huh? It will determine who has ultimate control. All of the left stays in the Glory! Hallelujah! We're in line and over on the right. Good I would, I don't do. That which I Oh, 